Authorities in focus and uh, copper is very much in the mix. Manisha is here with that. Manisha, morning. Thank you so much for that, Prashant. Well, yes, everything in metal seems to be doing quite well, and that is because of the global manufacturing activity seems to be picking up. We've seen stronger data come in from US, from China, from Germany, even Japan for that matter, and that really seems to be supporting markets there. Expectation that China measures uh, will come now to support economy with the kind of numbers that we're looking at, especially in property sector, also have been supportive. And add to that the fact that China has come back from holidays, so there is some restocking happening ahead of the major construction season there. It's keeping the metals on the higher side here. I'll start with copper, which is trading at a 14-month high right now, and we've seen the prices gain, continue to gain, actually, for last six weeks now, and we have seen strong gains come in for this one. One, there are some uh, mined uh, disruptions that are reported from Africa. Two, you also are looking at smelters in China, looking to cut copper production, refined copper production by 5 to 10 percent, has been a supportive factor for some time now. Not just copper, aluminum is trading at a 13-month highs. You have zinc trading at a three-month highs. Platinum prices surged nearly 5% overnight, and we are looking at a multi-month highs onto this one. Iron ore prices, which actually have been a laggard most of 2024 until now, also saw strong gains in last two trading sessions. We're looking at a two-week highs coming in for iron ore as well. Come to precious metals, and we're looking at very strong gains continuing for this one. Silver for one is now trading at a three-year high. It's $28 an ounce has been taken off on the higher side there. We've seen the prices gain up by nearly 10% in last four trading sessions itself. India silver imports have hit record highs for the month of Feb, so we are investing, buying into physical silver. That has been supportive. Also, uh, UBS has come out with a report suggesting that at $28 an ounce, silver is a still good buy because $32 an ounce is what they're looking at in terms of prices by the time this year ends. And I want to uh, finish off this link by talking about gold, which has hit yet another record highs. Today is the 10th trade day that we're looking at prices trading at an all-time high. $2,340 an ounce in the global markets here. And the Indian markets should come in on your screens because we've closed over 71,000 rupees per 10 grams also. It has been an 8,000 rupees per 10 grams of a jump up in less than a month that we've seen come in for the gold prices. Important data cues coming in from the uh, PBOC where China seems to be adding gold reserves for a 17th straight month in the month of March. When you look at the month of March itself, China has bought 160,000 uh, ounces of uh, gold there taking the total gold reserves to almost 72.74 tons. It's not just China. Other central banks also are buying gold in big quantities, whether it's about India, Turkey, Kazakhstan. East Europe numbers are also quite on the stronger side here. For this week now, the street will watch out for inflation data. Well, that comes in from US, from China. And then you also have the FOMC minutes coming up. The market will take cues from all of that. Thank you. That's a comprehensive wrap of all the action from the commodity space. Gold at all-time high, silver at a three-year high, copper at a 14-month high. Uh, things are just going up. But